Okay, it's a quick video on a build I did, computer build, uh, using the Fractal Define R6 gunmetal gray case. Um, the cases I've looked at, such as the Evo X uh, by Fantax, the, a couple other ones that are coming out by Cooler Master. Um, what I've noticed on YouTube and all the reviews, everybody loves this Define R6 for some reason. And I didn't really understand it, and then I got one. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, let's take a look, okay, uh, oh, look at this here, this is nice. Uh, this is a quick overview of the case, um, not a lot of YouTube videos on the gunmetal version, um, it was actually like $30 more than the black one, because the black one was on sale for $109, um, certain, certain areas, or certain sites, I should say. Um, but I was, uh, I, I could only find the gunmetal for 140 to 150 I think, and then plus shipping and everything, and it ended up being uh, around $170. So it's not cheap, but the gunmetal, I think, uh, looks a little more high quality or uh, elegant. Um, so anyway, this is the video on that. Uh, hope, hope you enjoy it, and I'll, let me know what you think. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the specs, but it's all pretty much the top of the line you can get. The 970 EVO M.2 drive, 32 gigs of DDR4 uh, RAM, um, 1080Ti, and an 8700K 8, processor. Um, and I got some Noctua fans as well. <laughs> Okay, just a few things about the case. Uh, going through it, it was pretty straightforward uh, to take things apart. Uh, there's a few times where I thought I was going to break it because I was pull putting a lot of force on certain components, but it held together pretty nicely. Uh, the four screws at the top to take the top plate off uh, for mounting the radiator is nice, but having Phillips head screws, four of them, in order to do that is kind of annoying considering they're really tiny also. Well, um, front cover for the drive bay moving that to the back was kind of annoying um, there's a bunch of little Phillips head screws that hold that in place too and it's not as straightforward as you would think um, so it took a couple of uh, a little bit of reviewing and trying to figure out how that okay really important note here grab the instructions for um, this Asus CPU installation tool Grab the instructions, grab your tool, and then you want to carry them over. Don't grab your CPU yet. You want to carry these over, and you want to toss them in the garbage. Because you don't need those. Useless. Getting all the fan mount 
getting all the fans mounted, it was pretty easy. Um, there's the, the fan controller in the back that's pretty easy to tie everything into. And it's in a pretty decent spot. Uh, as far as the other cabling goes, the extension, the white extension cables that I had ended up making it really difficult to cable manage because of, you know, the fact that there's a lot of cables now. Um, but getting the power supply all plugged in and uh, through the opening and sliding it back into the uh, slot is pretty nice. It's a nice feature to have. Um, but it came out pretty decent. It looks good. So I'm not sure why everybody shows them putting the RAM into the slots and snapping it in. Uh, I think it's because they just took out a small loan to uh, purchase their 16 gigs and uh, maybe like a micro mortgage for uh, 32 gigs and now they want to show it off. So they got to give it some air time. But anyway, here's the RAM going in. So this is the first time I'm putting an AIO uh, all in one uh, water cooler on. And it was actually pretty straightforward, followed the instructions and just had to be careful that I don't smear the thermal paste that comes pre-applied. But other than that, it was pretty easy. Okay, so the cables back here, uh, because of all the white extensions, uh, ended up being a significant amount of cabling, so I tried to make it as neat as I could. Uh, didn't use any zip ties, I used the Velcro straps that I had. Um, so I strapped everything into place, connected all my fans up. We got uh, th three fans at the top, exhausting. Uh, one fan at the back, exhausting. And then we have the, these two fans for the radiator pulling air in to the case. And then there's also two fans down there pulling air in. So plenty of air going out, plenty of air coming in. Uh, there is an opening up top here uh, where the five and a half inch drive goes in. You can't put this radiator any higher. So you can see the screws end right there. So I think when I put the cover back on, it'll close this off. If not, I'll 3D print something to close that up. Down here, same situation, you have a wide open gap there uh, that I wanted to close off. Uh, so here's the inside. Um, I gotta get uh, or print uh, a cable clips here so I can make that look a little neater, but it doesn't look too bad. We got that one back there. Uh, 32 gigs of uh, memory, obviously everybody knows what's going in here. So yeah, this is the color, you kind of get an idea, I've been putting, my, I'm putting something black because it's hard to tell. So here's something black in the same light, so you can kind of see See if I can get in there. Kind of see what it uh, what it looks like. So 
These are the Noctua fans that I installed. Uh, this, these three. Uh, and then these are the two Corsair fans that came with uh, the cooling system, the H115. Uh, I mounted those up there. So these two, this one, and those two are all um, uh, pulse width modulating so they can be adjusted in speed. And then this one, the fractal fans, and the bottom two um, can't, so everybody knows. Well, sure, you guys have seen this case enough, so you know, you know what to do, where to connect the fans. Basically, this, these, just a quick cat recap. These are the ones that are not modulating, so they're the three pin um, fans that are not pulse width modulating, and then these three over here are pulse width. So, um, the top two of these two Corsair fans I actually tied into. Uh, sorry, the front two Noctua fans, those two for the radiator, are actually tied into the controls for uh, the uh, cooler, uh, the CPU cooler. So that's why I had uh, the three available for the other fans. So anyway, I'm going to start putting this back together and we'll uh, show you the end product. I also 3D printed this uh, Beginner's Luck Garage uh, M.2 cover um, only because I relocated the heat sink for the M.2 down here so it's away from the CPU um, and the heat from the graphics card. Uh, so when I relocated that there's LEDs behind here that were lighting up and there's just basically chip on board LEDs that are lighting up for no reason. It just looked weird. So went ahead and uh, printed this Beginner's Luck Garage out and slapped it on there. Uh, so it'll, it's kind of got like a backlight to it. I'll, we'll show that in the final edit. Taking the video now with uh, a Note 8 just so you can see with different all these cameras have different colors, so it's not all perfect. But maybe you can get a general idea. It's a really nice gray. The unfortunate part is, inside your house it looks kind of black. It's only in direct sunlight where we actually get to see how gunmetally it really is. So, if you're going to be, if it's going to be in a dark place in your house, doesn't really make sense to spend the money. Sorry about that. Even the back of this thing is all gray too. It's really all gray. Nice thing is the IO shield is actually gray too. Well, it looks gray. Um, so it kind of blends right in. Which is nice. Anyway, 